What is going on YouTube? My name is Mo and welcome to another exciting collaboration, this time with Ante from Ante Photography. Now Ante here is going to walk us through his award-winning edit, which was a part of the Nikon or Nikon FFA contest that was run on Instagram. Now I'm not sure how do we pronounce this brand name. Is it Nikon or is it Nikon? Let us know in the comment section below. Anyway, let's head to the intro. Now, before I hand it over to Ante over here, I'd like to give a shout out to the photographer and the beautiful model over here. I'll leave a link to their Instagram account in the description below. Make sure to check them out. Additionally, if you haven't done that yet, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on future videos similar to this one. All right, so enough of me. The floor is all yours, Ante. Hi everyone, my name is Ante and I'm a Croatian photographer based in Stockholm at the moment. First, I would like to say thank you more from the Light Shapers for giving me this chance to be featured on your YouTube channel. And today I'm going to show you editing steps for this image right here. This photo was taken by Kevin Celestin with Stormy Mind in the frame. And I did this edit right here for Nikon Photography Editing Challenge. So with that being said, let's get started. I start my edits by importing the photos into the camera roll. And from here I'm thinking about what kind of edit I would like to achieve. For this specific image, I wanted to achieve kind of like a colorful and very retro look. So I knew that I will have to rise vibrance. I knew because of this lot of green cast in it that I will have to fix the white balance. And also there were some overexposed area here and overexposed area here and underexposed area under the seats. So I knew that I will have to fix some of the exposures. To check your exposure distribution you can also check the histogram and here you see that this raw file had some of the highlight clipping and some of the shadows clipping after uh, my basic adjustments my edit was looking like this i lowered down the temperature more to the like a cooler tones and i uh, added the tint the magenta tint into the image so this is the way i uh, reduced the the green cast also, I lowered down the exposure, I lowered down the highlights and the whites, but that made my overall image darker, so I had to brighten the shadows. I raised the vibrance and I changed the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Vivid, and that my, made my image even more like colorful. So, this was before and this is after. After basic adjustments, I went to camera calibration and I added magenta tint into the shadows as well so I can remove the green cast from the shadows and I raised the saturation of blue primary slider and the reason for that was to add even more saturation into the image overall and then I went to the tone curves here I created a, like a slight S curve I lowered down the highlights so I can further decrease the sh uh, highlight clipping and I make the black Blacks a little bit more like uh, brighter so I can uh, reduce the shadow clipping. Then I went to the red channel, lower down the highlight uh, reds area so I can like uh, remove redness from the hair skin tone. And then when it comes to the blue channel, I raise the shadows and the highlights so I can add a cool feel into the image. Then I went to the split toning and here I added like a uh, orange. Uh, uh, tint into the highlights and some of the blue tint into the shadows and this uh, this way I started to create color contrast. Lastly I went to the HSL adjustment uh, sliders and here I moved the yellows toward the oranges so I can remove the green cast and greens more toward the yellows. I changed the blue hues more toward the aquas. So this was before and this is after so green cast removed completely and this like a uh, floor became more like an aqua. I saturated the, all of the individual hues and I added some of the lightness into them. Except for the aquas which affected the floor and the main reason was I wanted to create floor a little bit darker so it can be in contrast with the upper part of the image which was brighter. When it comes to this image it was taken with ISO 8000 which means that I had to reduce some of the noise and uh, when I did that, I lost some of the details and sh uh, sharpness uh, from the image. So I uh, added some of the sharpness to about 30. And also I added 
clarity and the haze. And this helped me to remove hazy look or unsharp look from the image. And I'm just gonna show you quickly once again before. So this was before and this is after with just basic camera roll adjustments. Once I open my images into the Photoshop, I open them as smart objects. And the reason for that is so I can always go back into the camera roll and do some further adjustments or changes. For this particular image, I duplicated the first camera roll adjustment layer and I went back into the camera roll once again. I lowered down the temperature even further and I added some of the magenta tint as well. I played with some of the individual hues and made them a little bit darker. Because all of this affected my uh, model's skin tone, I created uh, the mask and I masked out the model's skin tone. So this was before and this is after. You can see how it changes uh, this around area. Then because of the chairs they became a little bit, uh, I would say dark orange, I created the selective color adjustment layer and I increased the yellows inside of the colors and I increased the yellows inside of the yellows. So this was before and after. And then when it comes to the floor, I didn't like how saturated uh, it looks. So I added some uh, photo filter, Sephia, and uh, I made it a little bit more desaturated. Keep in mind that in the camera row, you can use also adjustments brush and you can edit uh, specific individual areas of the photo but for this particular image I was also changing the individual hues so I decided on masking. When I was done with the basic coloring I decided to remove distractions and in my eyes the distractive part were here, here and here and also the posters I didn't quite like the content and the passenger were here in my eyes she was a little bit distracting so I decided to remove her. I created a new layer and basically I clone stamp all of the areas that I didn't like. After all the clone stamping, my edit was looking like this. And keep in mind that I usually don't stamp my layers as that can be destructive and I keep my workflow uh, undestructive, but my computer couldn't handle the amount of the layers so I had to create a new file. And this was after all the clone stamping was done. As posters didn't look so realistic, I decided to add some of the light and the metal feel into them. So I find uh, like a metal uh, texture on the internet and I added it over the posters and it made the uh, posters look more realistic. I changed the blending mode to luminosity so I don't affect the colors of this area but just uh, the light. Now it's time for the skin retouch. I'm using the touch and burn technique. I created uh, two groups uh, and with the two uh, adjustment curves. One of them I make uh, darker and one of them brighter. Brighter is touch and darker one is the burn. And I mask them and um, I invert the mask to black and then I use the white color brush with a flow of 1 and opacity to 100 and I'm starting to even the skin tones. So this was after the skin tone uh, was even. I can show you how the mask they look like. And once again, before and after. It's mostly visible here, before and after. Now her, when her skin tone is uh, even and nice, I go and do some global dodge and burn. And this is more to create depth into the image and to emphasize some of the highlights. So this was bef after the global dodge and burn and before. Before and after. You can notice that the other poster wasn't orange, so I decided to change that and I created the new layer, I changed the blending mode to the color and I hand painted over this area in orange. I also hand painted the floor as I wanted to have this like an aqua teal look on the floor. So this was before and this is after. And you can see also, for example, that this area here was a little bit distracting, this actually whiter part of this underseat area. So I painted with a black brush in the normal blending mode so I can reduce the visibility of. When I was done with the retouch and uh, with the changing specific color hues, I decided to add some composite elements into the image and I started by creating the new layer and by painting like lines where I want to neon effect to be visible. To 
have this line straight, I hold down the shift key, I click uh, with the brush here, and then I click here and will create straight line. To make the vertical lines uh, straight, you just hold down the key, uh, shift key while uh, painting on the specific areas. I used the flow 100%, opacity 100%, white brush with the hardness of 80%. I did the same thing for the like um, other areas around the windows and on the floor as well. Then after that, I uh, double click on the on the layer and I changed some of the layer style. I added the inner glow, outer glow, and drop shadow. And uh, what specific uh, uh, adjustments do? For example, inner glow, it's uh, it's adding. You can see the specific color onto the onto the brush of the lines, and then to make sure that this glow is uh, shining also around, you are adding the outer glow. So this is before and this is after. This effect is really like um, it's barely visible, I would say, but it's helping to make the neon lights look uh, more natural and real. And then lastly, I added drop shadows. And this is just making sure that you are having the basically uh, dropping of the lights on the like a ceiling area or on the windows and so on. So it makes the neon look even more realistic. I did the same thing for each of the layers. So it looked like this in the end. To copy the layer style so you don't have to do the same thing all the time, you just hold down the Alt key and uh, press with right click here and drag this uh, layer style options to the other layers and it will, it will copy all the settings. Then I added the hue saturation and with this one I wanted to move the, the whole, you can see, for example, it was like more like yellow and with the hue saturation I move it more toward the red, all of these tones and actually it is good to add this hue saturation uh, adjustment layer because then you can play with the lights and for example you see there are different options like green and uh, pink and uh, for example blue and pinkish again so you can play with different types of hues so it's good to add this hue saturation adjustment layer after i created a new group i did the same thing and just i filled the frames of the window and posters with the um, specific things that uh, were happening at that moment and they are happening actually still and for example here you have quarantine sign and here is a corona beer not specifically coronavirus but beer and for example here because this edit was done for the Nikon photography editing challenge here you have Nikon FFA sign and then the award was uh, Z50 Nikon camera which I won, thank you guys once again, so I added that as well here. I wanted to make sure that this edit is really representing the date when it was done and purpose for what it was done. To make this uh, composite more realistic, um, I created uh, like a mask. You can see, for example, if I disable this layer mask, this Nikon FFA sign was uh, behind uh, her back, I would say, behind her head. So I just uh, brushed the area that was uh, clipping with uh, her hair and it looked like it. this time is from behind. Also, when you are adding this type of uh, composites, you really need to make sure that uh, the perspective is right. And for that one, I what I do usually, uh, I select the layer, I press Ctrl plus T and then you can right click and you can play with the perspective and you can adjust the letters or whatever you brush it and fix the perspective. When I was done with all the composites, I decided to color grade my image and I started with the black and white um, adjustment layer. I switched the mode to luminosity and it helped me to darken out some of the, some of the tones, specific hues. So I darkened some of the teal look here and the orange here. So this was before and this is after. Then I added uh, more vibrance into the image by creating the vibrance adjustment layer and increasing the vibrance to plus 20. After that, I created the color balance uh, adjustment layer and this helped me to 
darkened even more specific areas of the image and to add more magenta and blue into the yellow uh, and sorry into the midtones and more blue into the shadows after that i created the selective colors and adjusted only neutrals and the reason why i did that is to add even more uh, blue and uh, magenta tint into the um, overall image so i moved the yellows more toward the min minus side and the reason for that is just to decrease the yellow from the image and i moved the magentas more toward the plus to add some of the magenta then i created uh, again uh, adjustment curves and i switched mode to luminosity and uh, the reason why i switched mode to luminosity is to keep them maintain the contrast that i achieve with the s curve but still break uh, the added saturation once you keep it in the normal blending mode so this is normal and you can see it's a little bit more saturated than what i like so when you put it in the luminosity it is decreasing the saturation but it's this uh, like layer helping me to break down the, the some of the blacks here and some of the whites over there and then as the model was looking a little bit too dark I created the new adjustment uh, curves and uh, here I masked in only the model and I make her a little bit more brighter and the last adjustment layer that I added was a uh, curves adjustment layer and uh, for this one I definitely break the blacks and whites even more and I added some of the more contrast into the background and I masked out the model because I didn't want this to affect her so before and after you can see clearly how this new color grade is much more like a purple and a blue i would say more rich tones it has and uh, it's a little bit retro and that's what my goal and i think the purple tones like over purple tone it complements orange and teal so good when I was done with the color grading, I stamped all my layers and uh, I created the smart objects from the stamped layer and I went to the camera row and I just brightened the shadows and the overall image. So this was before and this is after. Why I created the smart objects is just because I can always go back into the camera row and do additional fixes. Uh, my image became a little bit too red at, after all uh, the color grade, so I decided to create one more uh, adjustment layer and the hue and saturation one and I moved the hues more towards the blue tones so this was before and this is after you can see the hue changes in the here uh, I didn't want the the uh, that this adjustment layer affects the skin tone so I excluded the model and then for the last step I reduced the saturation of the model by creating the uh, vibrance and I lowered down the uh, vibrance to about minus 4 I must in only the model skin tone so this was after it was really a uh, subtle change so I could go even lower but I just kept it around minus 4 and this was my final adjustment and quick tip here uh, if you want to copy this uh, like a mask you just hold down the alt key and left mouse click and then you can replace layer mask and to invert the mask you call down the control and you press i and then you invert it and this is how i usually create my masks separately for the model and for the background so here comes my final before and after here we have original raw file and here is my edit i wanted to achieve colorful retro vibes and i think i did it with specific color grade and with the adding these composites like neon lights in case you've been wondering why I didn't remove this area here, just because this photo edit was uh, meant to be posted on Instagram, so after 4 by 5 crop, this area wasn't visible. Thank you more from Light Shapers for giving me this chance uh, to do this kind of walkthrough and uh, to be uh, featured on your YouTube channel. I'm super grateful for that. Thank you, Kervan, for giving us, all of us photo from photography community, to edit your amazing photo. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you find this walkthrough helpful and if you have any questions don't hesitate to contact me via direct messages on my Instagram account Ante Photography.
Thank you.